Now, when it comes to investing your hard-earned money, you might be bored with bonds and tired of trusts, and you may be interested in the growing trend of investing in fine wine. And what's more now could be the best time to have a go, as the experts are predicting the newly released 2005 vintage Bordeaux could make you a serious amount of money. But is it all too good to be true? With oh. us in the studio now, Patrick Sanderman from the fine wine merchants, Leon Sanderman and the wine critic, Malcolm Gluck. Good morning, both. Good morning. Good morning, Chair. You um, brought your wine with you, I see. Mm. Oh, we have, yes. Well, I bought, no, I bought an empty bottle. Why? Well, because I think it's a metaphor for investing in wine. You, think, you don't think investing in wine is no, a good I idea? I think Malcolm. investing in wine, is, it, unless you really know what you're doing, is, is a mug's game. I but think investing you can in make a lot of money if you know what you're doing and you're investing at the top of the market, you've got a huge amount of money, you can sell it impeccably or you can have it sell it on your behalf, then you cannot fail to make money. But those wines are already spoken for. It's impossible for anyone watching this program to buy those wines. Patrick, would you like to <laughs> pick that one up? Is it possible well, for people to get in on this? Well, what Malcolm says is absolutely correct. I mean, you, you have to have... My God, uh, a wine merchant agreeing with you. This is a first. <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> most, most of us wine merchants disagree with everything that Malcolm says, but um, <laughs> that's just become a rule of thumb. Um, no, I think what Malcolm says is absolutely correct. If you're going to invest in, in wine, you should be looking at um, investing with money, which is uh, part of your portfolio, separate to your main portfolio, if you like. You do it for the pleasure of investing in wine, for the pleasure of drinking the wine in the future. However, um, this investment, if you like, has led to a certain speculative market, and especially with brand Bordeaux 2005, which is probably the most widely reported vintage we've ever had, uh, reported on the, in the press and on the television and everything else. And this has driven prices to a new level. And as Malcolm says, unless you're actually on the list um, and you have been in the pecking order buying these wines before, you may find it difficult to do so. Having said that, a number of our customers who are traditional wine buyers who would buy, let's say, Chateau Lafitte 2005. Which is what you've got there. Well, well this is oh. Lafitte 1982. Okay. Oh, should, should we open it? Um, I think it's not, 81, actually. actually you're um, sorry. Oh, dear, what a terrible year. Oh, dear, what a terrible year, absolutely. No, I thought I'd that my just, 82. Can you just take us through the maths? You, on the Bordeaux 2005, well, for example, yeah. per bottle, if I was in the unlikely event of my manager to get hold of one, yes. I can hang on to it for how long and make how much money? Well, you wouldn't buy a bottle. You'd be buying a case of 12 bottles. Okay. And at the moment, if you were taking Lafitte 2005, you would be paying around £4,000 a case. And this is for the wine while it's still in the barrel in Bordeaux. In two years' time, that wine will be shipped over here. And ideally, you would want to keep it in bond so that you don't pay the taxes, the duty, and more importantly, the VAT on the wine. And then you can sit on it as an investment, if you like. Now, just to give you an idea, if this was Lafitte 82, and I wish it was, I pulled out the wrong bottle, I'm sorry, um, this would probably have sold uh, in 1984 en primeur for about £500 a case. The 1982 is currently trading, currently trading at £9,000 a case. Oh, that's, that's You enormous. see, you can make money, but you have to have the allocation. I mean, most people wouldn't be able to even know, know how to acquire the wine. You'd have to go to a, a merchant like Patrick. Or, in, in, your but, in your privileged position, you, do you do this? I mean, have you got your well, own... What I do is, this is, I pulled this... Yeah, I was asked, the BBC kindly <laughs> said to me, can you bring something a prop along? And I said, am I insufficient? They said, no, no, what can you bring? And I said, OK. I went to my recycling bring. I bought, bought out a bottle of... Uh, half a bottle of German wine, which I bought some years ago. It's 1989. It cost me a couple of quid a, bo a, a bottle in Germany. It's absolutely wonderful. It's not an investment. What I've done is stick it in, a, in my wine cupboard. It's absolutely fabulous. I but drank it the other night. World-class wine. But you can't buy that bottle today. And what Malcolm is saying is that, you know, that the greatest investment in wine is to buy wines that you will not be able to buy in 10 years' time so that you secure those wines, you can drink them in 10 years' time at their optimum mm, exactly. moment when they're, the, uh, they're, they're at their maturity and in the best condition, and you can enjoy it. This, however, is speculation, and it's a very, very different area of the market as mm. far as I'm concerned. I mean, in a way, these wines are rather like rare paintings or you know, a, a rare Persian artifact or oriental curiosity. It's very difficult to, to know what you're doing. You really have to have expert yeah. help. It costs you a great deal of money, and uh, yes, you, you will it in 10, if you're prepared to wait, you know, 20 or 30 years, if you fine, get it wrong. yes. And yes. you don't get to drink it, which is a... Well, you can well, drink it, if you get it wrong, you can drink it. Yeah. And of course the vintage is, I mean, the 81, uh, what is the difference, and this is an 81, not an 82. 82 was a, what, a legendary vintage. Um, we this could is probably 1,200 pounds. We could. But Patrick and Malcolm, we have to leave it there. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you. That brings us almost to the end of the programme. We're back tomorrow.